Hello guys and welcome back to another satisfactory guide. Now that update 4 has hit early access, a lot of people are having problems with their factory power plants, which might be linked to a fluid problem. So if you're having a fluid problem, this video may help you too. After all, I know how frustrating it can be when you hear this, but have no worries if you need to relax, I have the solution. This video is brought to you by Raid Shadow Legends. Now we all need to escape the factory from time to time, and when I do, I lust for blood. Raid gives me an outlet now for my anger. I can vanquish my enemies, showing no remorse regardless of who or what they are. Raid is a free-to-play mobile fantasy game. I love building up my team, equipping them with items and upgrading my champions to eliminate the enemy forces. If that's not your style, think up a new strategy in the arena. Nothing beats outsmarting other player team comps. Raid is bigger and better than ever before. They've just started a month and a half of awesome events and tournaments, and there's no sign of them slowing down yet. This month, they're releasing a new batch of epic and legendary champions which look amazing and they're also releasing their second version of Doom Tower. This means more rewards, new gear to win to customize your champions, but also two brutal looking bosses to take on. Even better yet, Raid is free for anyone to play. And as a bonus, if you use my link or scan my QR code, you'll get access to some pretty sweet stuff. You'll get Jotun, a free epic champion, 100,000 silver to spend, 50 gems and 3 ancient shards, but that will only last for the next 30 days. So be sure to jump in game and if you want to grab your stuff you can collect it in the top right hand corner. Anyway guys, what are you waiting for? I'll see you in the arena. And with that out of the way, we're back to the factory. And the first thing we need to talk about is that rather than power plants scaling up power production according to the demand, they now run at a flat 100%. This means that if you've not calculated your coal power plant's resource intake, then you may find that your factory keeps turning off and on, such as here. As a little cheat sheet for building an efficient power plant, coal generators consume 45 meters cubed of water and 15 coal per minute. This equates to one Mark I miner on a pure node with eight coal generators and three water extractors. And of course we need to have the water extractors built on the ends and one in the middle of the the water line. The other option is to have a single water extractor overclocked to 225% feeding 6 power plants alongside 90 coal. Now of course you can use a load balance technique or a manifold, they're both the same, one just takes longer to warm up. And also note that the water extractor output has now been centered, so you may actually want to go back to all of your original water extractors and fix all your lines because they look weird. Another cool thing to note is that they can now also snap to one another on a grid or in line with pipes by holding control, making everything just look that little bit cleaner. A thing to note though with the power changes is if we look at the new power UI, we can see that we have a list of new um, titles to talk about. <laughs> I don't know how to put it. We have consumption, capacity, production, and max consumption. These are all clickable should you like them to be shown or not. Consumption refers to the cost of all things running currently on this circuit. Production refers to how much power is currently being produced. Max consumption is the price of energy if everything on this circuit was running. For example, this shows us that part of the factory may currently be turned off. For example, one of the coal miners may be on standby as the conveyor is currently full or whatever it's uh, flowing into. Finally, we have capacity. Now, capacity calculates the max production currently available, including power plants that are waiting to turn on, such as these biomass generators, which will only turn on once the current production has peaked. As we are always running at max power, it's also a good idea to charge batteries to hold any excess power you generate. You never know when you may need them to kickstart your factory. However, these batteries do not contribute towards capacity. 
I will mention that I've also covered most of this in a guide to circuits and switches, as well as going more in depth in how we can use them in our factory. So if you do want to know more about that, do check out the link. I'll put a little card in the top right hand corner now. At this point, you're probably thinking, well, we already know about coal, but what about fuel? Well, let's give them a little look too. Here I have a setup where we have 180 crude oil being refined using the fuel recipe to create 120 fuel per minute. Now providing the system doesn't freeze up with resin, uh, make sure at this point that you are either sinking the, the excess resin or you are actually using it further along in the manufacturing process, that this will then go on to fuel 10 fuel generators. Now this is because since update 4, fuel generators now use 12 fuel per minute rather than 15, which means you may actually want to go back to all your lines and add more generators. So for pre-existing fuel generator lines, and I have to stress it's fuel generators, you can now add an extra generator for every four generators that you had. So if you had 20 fuel generators running, for example, you can now run 25. Not bad, eh? But I don't know about turbo fuel. I haven't looked into that. Now, though this does optimize the line, you may still come into difficulties. People are finding that despite providing sufficient fuel to run the generators, they're still turning off and on. Some have told me to overcompensate with fuel for this, which you could do by filling it up with more fuel. Obviously, it's not going to go turn off and on but that doesn't really solve the problem. So I've looked into it and I feel that the problem could be related to either backflow or gravity head lift, for example. And we can fix this without overcompensating by using valves. Placing a valve before each segment stops backflow, which is more likely prevalent along a long flat manifold located below the fuel generator's inputs. Placing valves creates compartments, if you like, along a line which stops the backflow at the section that splits it all off. And from here, the fuel fills up from the end compartments first, and then slowly but surely it fills back to the start of all the valves. This takes time to fully saturate similarly to a normal manifold, but once done, the generators will run consistently and smoothly without any interruption. Now, if you haven't unlocked valves or want another option, I recommend feeding the inputs using gravity by having a manifold or load balancing system above the height of the generator's input, the fuel will not backflow into the manifold, avoiding this problem entirely. And this is also super important when it comes to other manufacturing lines that use fluids as well, whether you're using the blender or refineries or even the packager. So if you're not using gravity assisted inputs and you're insistent on having a constantly running factory, then make sure to add valves or pumps to stop backflow between junctions and to, to maintain the flow. And hopefully with that, providing you feed enough input resources, they'll run without any problems. But that's all we have time for in this video. If you did enjoy it, please do drop a thumbs up. And obviously if you want to see more, don't forget to subscribe. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching and thank you to all of our amazing supporters, most notably our Solar Eclipse Patreons, The Calamity, Cerebral Tag and Trebor, as well as our Lunar Eclipse Patreons, Matt Lippard, Chris McCabe, Lord of July and our Blood Moon of the Day, Jimmy Rogers. Anyway, guys, until next time, as always, ciao for now.